He is known as the Snake Man. Stephen Lesman is authorized to be on my island, Maria Island Major, in his search for me, the St. Lucia Racer. We have met before, you see, and he has the pictures to prove it. Yep, that's me. That was in 2012, and you may get to see me in person today if Stephen actually gets lucky. But this time it's going to be different and a bit more difficult, after all. We are the St. Lucia Racer. We are known for our speed. Right now, I am speaking to you from an undisclosed location. We will get back to Stephen and Pius when I think they're getting too close for comfort. There is breaking news today. The distinction of the world's rarest snake goes to the St. Lucia Racer. The latest estimate puts its population between 20 and 100. That makes the St. Lucia Racer the rarest snake in the world. My family and I are happy for the world record, but we are not comforted by it. Our numbers are small and dwindling, and that is extremely worrying. Today we're having visitors from the St. Lucia National Trust and the Department of Forestry. The National Trust has monitors like Safira Hunt, and Lance Peterson, who are based in the south of the island. This is the St. Lucia National Trust Interpretation Center, from where preparations are being made for a boat trip to Maria Island Major. We pack a bucket, which has the rat bait in it. We also have a chocolate wax cube, which we use as a detection method. So if any animal bites onto it, we can tell from the bite mark which animal was present in the bait station at the time. A biosecurity quarantine is done to ensure that no one brings seeds, pests, including cockroaches, or any foreign creature to the Maria Island. Shoes are dusted, pockets and bags searched and emptied. We would ensure that the shoes you come with it is clean, your socks, your pockets, your bag, that you don't carry any foreign item over to the island. Or if, if you bring in food, that you don't have any seeds in there. A similar protocol is used for the boat carrying the group to the island today. And once it arrives at Maria Island, the first course of action is a beach check. The reason for the beach check is to ensure that we have no invasive species who have actually walked along there. Also, we check for human footprints as well, which we saw this morning. We saw a box for, I think it contained pack plugs or something. I would think that somebody with engine issues stopped over and they left that there. I also picked up a few bottles, plastic bottles, and these look like probably whilst they were changing their engines, they stopped to have a drink or something and they just left it on the beach as well. I also picked up somebody's sweater that must have fallen off whilst they were walking along. Once the beach check is complete, the monitors will then search bait stations and the curiously named rat motels. Most times when rats come across, the first thing they would do is to look for somewhere warm and cozy to set up a house. And so this rat motel was built. And in these bait stations we have a rodenticide. That, um, it's a brodifacum based rodenticide. That means it's an anticoagulant, so it would just with um, one dose, the rodent would just bleed inside and die slowly. So we want to keep this island free from predators. Right now it is free from rats, free from mongooses. And we really want to keep it that way. Now these bait stations have worked wonders as there are no rats to bother us at Maria Island Major. Happily, that motel has never been used by rats. Now I share my home at Maria Island Major with other species of reptiles. Many birds come to nest between the months of April to August. These birds are actually welcomed here. There are local birds such as doves and pigeons that also nest on the island. They fly from the mainland every evening to the Maria Island. But enough about those noisy birds. 
Thankfully, I can't hear them as snakes do not have ears. Bet you didn't know that. Well, keep watching. There is a lot about me you did not know. First, let us hear from a snake expert, Dr. Jennifer Daltrey. She is the conservation biologist with Fauna and Flora International. Unfortunately, we don't know very much about their biology because they're so rare, they're so hard to find. We've never found any eggs of them. So there's a lot we still have to learn. The St. Lucia racer, yes, it is a snake, but it is non-venomous. The snake poses no threat to absolutely no one. It has no poisonous fangs, no, um, nothing at all that would, that would affect or injure anybody. So we want to inform the public that they ought to preserve the species, mainly because it is endemic to us. And right here in Maria, it is the only place in the whole wide world that you are going to find a St. Lucia racer. So how did the reptiles get here? Most of our reptiles originated from South America. They came on driftwood. Now, the snake we're talking about was called a quest by the old fishermen. Now it's called the St. Lucia racer. I was first spotted on mainland St. Lucia in the 19th century, but I was not discovered on Maria Island Major until well-known environmentalist Robert DeVoe, Gregor Williams and his wife came to visit one day. And guess who spotted me first? We wandered around the place and suddenly my wife said, look, there's a snake. <laughs> so really she was the first one who saw the snake. So, at one point, there were many of us on mainland St. Lucia, but mongooses, rats, and humans made life uninhabitable there. This is the most painful part of my existence. I am St. Lucian, Wasajis Palekweol, but repatriation to my homeland would be suicidal right now. This is what we want to change. I have not touched mainland St. Lucian soil in many, many years, but we live in hope that one day soon, we will be back. But first, the focus is on my survival, and driving this effort is the St. Lucia National Trust and the Forestry Department with strong support from partners and donors. The mandate of Forestry Department in the Ministry of Sustainable Development, Energy, Science and Technology is guided by the Wildlife Protection Act. In 1982, the island was declared a wildlife reserve, and um, from that aspect, Forestry has had an integral role, you know, in the management of wildlife, you know, on Mariah Island. The other partners working on ensuring we survive another generation are the Jewel Wildlife Conservation Trust and Fauna and Flora International, or FFI. There are other donors involved, among them the Critical Ecosystem Partnership Fund, the Balcom Trust, Syngenta, Disney Worldwide Conservation Fund, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Biodiversity conservation is such an expensive undertaking. Um, it, it requires not only financial resources, but very specialized skills, um, which we do not have. The Forestry Department has a number of well-trained staff, but we are collaborating with other agencies in terms of both technical and financial support. The objective of that partnership is to ensure that the St. Lucia Racer, yes, that's me, does not go into extinction. Um, you would appreciate that um, the Biodiversity Convention and the International Conservation for the Protection of Nature um, are both interested in the survival of this species and they're all expressing interest in supporting our work. Since we are only found on Maria Island Major, it means that the entire population of the St. Lucia racer could actually get wiped out. Say in the case of a fire, or should rats make their way to the island? Yes, this is exactly the problem, that the entire world's population is in this one very small site. And there are two problems with that. One is the population can't grow because it can't swim, so it's stuck on that site, it's as big as it can get. The other problem, though, is it's a single site. If something happens to that site, if there's a wildfire or a hurricane, then literally the entire world's population could be wiped out. We've basically got all our eggs in one basket at the moment. Matthew Morton and the Jewel Wildlife Conservation Trust are based in St. Lucia for over 12 years now. They have joined the National Trust and the Forestry Department and other agencies in determining the options for saving the St. Lucia racer. One suggestion is to have us breed in captivity. 
This has been done successfully with the St. Lucia Whiptail, but it's not as easy as it sounds. With a population of only 20 individuals, there are real problems because it means basically, you know, all of the snakes are related to each other. So when they have babies and they want to find a mate, the chances are they're mating with their cousin or even their parent. So there's a real problem if you have a population that stays small, they can die out because they are just inbreeding with each other. So what we need to do is try and get their numbers up. Whether it's in captivity or better still in the wild, we need to try and give them room for their population to increase. But that's a very high risk strategy because it's such a small population in the wild that any we take from that is going to have an impact on it. And none of us want to take the risk of taking some of them off the island, putting them into a zoo and risk them dying. So what is happening at the moment is we're doing some trials with a, a different species of race, so actually one from Anguilla. And the government of Anguilla has kindly cooperated with the government of St Lucia to allow them to take some races into captivity. We will then learn what food they need. Will they only eat the food that they eat naturally, which is lizards, or will they eat easier to obtain food, like mice? Um, we'll learn what conditions they need for breeding. We'll learn how to incubate the eggs, how to raise the young, and all of the things really that are involved in a breeding program. In Antigua, we've increased the population from just 50 racers to over a thousand. Now that's a different species of racer to the St. Lucia racer, but it shows what is possible if the will is there to try and save a, a, a rare snake. Successful breeding programs have helped boost the population of the St. Lucian parrot, the Amazona versicola. Jewel Wildlife has for over 50 years been developing breeding programs for conservation. This method of using a so-called analog species, a model species, is something we've used before. So we don't start with the really rare species. We start with a slightly more common one and learn how to do it first. So, an off-site breeding program will take some time and quite some effort to increase the St. Lucia racer. While these options are being analysed, Maria Island Major remains my only home. And my only hope is that the people of St. Lucia play their part in ensuring that the conditions for my survival are maintained. Well, conservation doesn't work unless the local people are, you know, cooperate, are interested and supportive. It's, it's, it's otherwise it's a losing battle. We really, really do need the public support here. Now back to the search party. Is Stephen any closer to getting an audience with me or any member of the St. Lucia Risa family? Will he have better luck this time? Hmm. Well, I guess the snake man will just have to try again. In the meantime, I will sit here among the cacti at the top of the hill and contemplate my future and that of our family here on Maria Island Major. For now, we can only dream of visiting our homeland.